So, no, I, I wouldn't say I have a passion for HR. Welcome back to Human Resources for the People. It's a human capital revolution. Today we're going to be talking about uh, this article from Cypher Shaw. If you're not familiar with them, they're a major employment law firm. Uh, they, they're, they're just huge and, and they know what they're doing. Uh, this is from their employment law lookout. And uh, the, the article is by Don Reddy Salawi, uh, which I assume is probably a, a litigator for Cypher Shaw. Uh, but the interesting thing is that the Supreme Court is arguing over de minimis tests for religious accommodation. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about what that means here. So the background on this story is that Gerald Groff was a carrier for the United States Postal Service, but they couldn't work on Sundays in observation of the Sabbath. And this is, you know, a fairly common problem. Uh, in my past experience, you know, generally speaking, the employers just allow them to do it. But I, I think there was probably a union component to this, if I had to guess. Uh, the USPS offered to find employees to cover the shifts, but on more than 20 Sundays, no one could swap with them. And they wrote them up for it, which I, I don't really understand. It sounds like they disciplined them after uh, uh, after 20 Sundays, but surely that can't be true. Eventually, he resigned, um, and they said, hey, you know, he didn't, he, he, and sued him over the fact that he couldn't, they couldn't ac accommodate his religion. And so Title VII of the, um, Title VII of, uh, of the Act, it makes it unlawful to discriminate against any individual with respect to their compensation the terms conditions or privileges of employment because of that individual's religion so you know it's it's pretty clear but there's always this de minimis burden that's really critical um that was established in 1977 in uh trans world air versus hardison and basically the idea of de minimis or of the minimum uh, is the idea that the employer shouldn't have to bear an undue hardship, shouldn't have to bear too much cost for accommodating a religious, uh, a religious accommodation. But the court has never really uh, sort of defined what that means, right? They've never really said what specifically a de minimis cost is. Um, and so the court is considering whether or not they should disapprove more than de minimis cost testing for refusing and whether an employer may demonstrate undue hardship on the conduct of the employer's business. Um, and so I think this is pretty critical. I mean, assigning a new person or a, another person for every shift, it, it, it seems like a lot. Um, but I've seen, uh, I've seen ones that are uh, much more substantial. So, the de minimis uh, standard violates Title VII. Uh, sorry, the uh, the uh, Groff, the the petitioner, the the plaintiff, uh, says that well, you know, it violates uh, Title VII's promise that employees should not be forced to choose between their faith and their job, and as a result, it violates uh, the the previous statute, the Title VII. And so the Supreme Court decision in 1977 was wrong. Um, you know, and then finally, th that it should use the American with Disabilities Act of significant difficulty or expense. Uh, and that's because, you know, uh, the Americans with Disabilities Act and Title VII kind of use similar language with respect to the undue hardship under the Americans with Disabilities Act, ADA, if you, if, if the accommodation results in, you know, a, a significant uh, burden or substantial cost, you know, that 
that is uh, th- that it doesn't have to be accommodated um and so the conservative justices are kind of looking for a compromise on how to define undue hardship uh, and in trying to define what undue hardship means and then both parties agree that de minimis standard shouldn't be the test alone uh, and so it's pretty interesting i think that um you know, th- there's a there's a strong argument here that de minimis isn't really well defined, and as a result, it's it's a little frustrating for an empl- uh, an employer to act you know effectively when when considering it. Um, multiple justices considered the ADA standard. And you know, express and Justice Roberts Roberts expressed concern that while the ADA addresses a discrete category of individuals, Title VII has broader scopes because it's there are a lot more religious employees. I would argue that I, I don't think that that's true, uh, considering the wide scope of disabilities in this country. For example, morbid ob- obesity is a um, is a uh, is a disability. I I would wager, and I haven't done the math on this, but I would wager that actually um, there there are more uh, ADA uh, accommodations than there are religious accommodations. Um, if I, if I had to, because uh, I I can't remember the number specifically right now, but something like 40% of Americans have no religion. Uh, so I, I just think that you'll pro- that there's probably a lot more than that. And ultimately, you know, this is the big issue and in, in what I suspected is that th- there is a cre- collective bargaining agreement and there's a discussion of whether or not it would, um, a f- uh, like a violation of the CBA would be an undue hardship, and that's really key here because, again, I believe that the USPS it doesn't expressly say it in this article, but I believe that you know that a union, um, uh, a, a, the union CBA, uh, you know, dictates this. That's why it took twenty absences before yeah, he even quit. He didn't. He didn't even get fired. He quit after twenty absences. Uh, so I mean I think it's pretty uh, pretty substantial. Um, you know the things are the same. We're gonna have to. Uh, the Supreme Court might change the standard as to what constitutes an undue hardship. I think that's an interesting thing to discuss and and look over. And of course, you know when you're reviewing job descriptions, you, you should include all essential job functions that may factor into religious accommodations. So what do you guys think about this? Uh, is this is this a um, concern for you? Do you think that religious accommodations should be uh, sort of increased? Because that could be the result of this, and as a result, uh, you may you know you may be working more shifts. You may be working shifts that you don't want to, as a result of a religious accommodation. Love to hear what you think down in the comments down below, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye, guys.